Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Sneha Baska, Junior Resident 3 in the Department of Radiology, D.Y. Patel Medical College and Hospital, Navi Mumbai. My topic for paper presentation is Importance of Early Imaging in Detecting Fetal Structures. Aims and Objectives Importance of Early Imaging in Detecting Fetal Structures. Introduction The detailed first trimester ultrasound is performed at 11 to 13 plus 6 weeks of gestation. Components of the detailed first trimester ultrasound examination include general overview and fetal biometry, comprehensive evaluation of fetal anatomy, and an assessment of the uterus and adnexal regions. This ultrasound examination is intended to complement the second trimester ultrasound and in the majority of pregnancies to provide early reassurance of normalcy. Antidatal soft ultrasound markers are fetal sonography findings that are generally not abnormalities as such, but are indicative of an increased age-adjusted risk of an underlying fetal aneuploidy or certain non-chromosomal abnormalities. The presence or absence of these minor markers can be used to adjust a patient's prior risk for aneuploidy based on biochemical screening results or maternal age. This becomes particularly important in screening for trisomy 21 as approximately 75% of fetuses affected by trisomy 21 will not have an ultrasound detectable major congenital anomalies at the time of second trimester anatomic survey. Methodology. Five patients were included in the study referred from the OBGY department of D.Y. Patel Medical College between 11 to 14 weeks of gestation. The patients were screened on GE Logic P9 RT machine. A curvilinear 1 to 5 Hz probe was used. In the evaluated patients, two subjects were found to have taken NT. Result. Of the evaluated five patients, two patients were found to have taken NT, double IIT catch and cystic hygroma in their fetuses. Imaging. A 34-year-old female of G2P1L1 is considered for this study. Her first pregnancy was normal. Second pregnancy was scanned at 11 to 12 weeks of gestation. Here, a thickened NT, cystic hygroma and double attic arch was detected on sonography. Imaging. On NT scan, the CRL was noted to be 56.5 mm, which corresponded to 12 weeks, 2 days. Subcutaneous edema is noted at head, neck and torso region. Here, an increased nuchal thickness of about 6.41 mm is seen in the same fetus. Cystic hygroma, which is seen in the same fetus, the images are shown here. These are few other images showing cystic hygroma in the same fetus. Double IIT arch was seen on transvaginal scan in the same fetus. Uh, the IIT arch was seen to bifurcate and form a ring other than the trachea. This is an, another image which shows double IIT cards on trans, uh, general scan seen in the same fetus. Considering the presence of cystic hygroma and double IIT cards, possibility of chromosomal abnormality was considered and chorionic villus sampling was performed for fish and microarray. The reports of chorionic villus sampling came as fish trisomy 21. Discussion. Nuchal translucency is a normal fluid-filled subcutaneous space at the back of the fetal neck from 11 weeks 3 days to 13 weeks 6 days period of gestation. Thickening of nuchal translucency can be associated with a number of anomalies including aneuploidies such as trisomies including Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, non-aneuploidy structural defects and syndrome such as congenital heart disease, skeletal dysplasia, miscarriage or fetal demise. Assessment of NT. The image show should be magnified to occupy 75% of the screen and should show only the fetal head, neck and upper thorax. The fetus must be in mid-sagittal plane. The fetal neck must be in neutral position, not hyperextended or hyperflexed. Three cogenic lines indicating the inner and outer borders of the fetal skin and the amnion must be displayed. The ultrasound calipers must be placed with the horizontal cross on the inner borders of the equilusion space and perpendicular to the fetal axis. The measurements of the NT must be taken at the widest space. The values should be obtained when the CRL is between 45 and 84 mm, that is between 11 weeks 3 days to 13 weeks 6 days. Cystic hygroma. Cystic hygroma, also known as cystic or nuchal lymphangioma, refers to the congenital macrocystic lymphatic malformations that most commonly occur in the cervicofacial regions, particularly at the posterior cervical triangle in infants. 
associations associated anomalies with cystic hygroma aneuploidy 65% of cystic hygromas can be associated with aneuploidy abnormalities such as Turner syndrome, Down syndrome, and a uh, few non-aneuploidic abnormalities such as congenital cardiac anomalies and pentology of cantrell. Radiographic features. They are usually well circumscribed and are of fluid density. Cystic hygromas may also have an infiltrative appearance and may be uni or multilocular. Antenatal ultrasound. On prenatal ultrasound, they may present as a nuchal cyst and may show septations plus or minus evidence of fetal anasarca or hydrops fetalis. Compared to nuchal translucency, it is a higher risk for aneuploidy, cardiac anomalies and fetal demise. Double IOTI catch. Double IOTI catches are the most common symptomatic type of IOTI catch variant. It may account for up to 50 to 60% of vascular rings. Clinical presentation. Double IOTI catch is mostly diagnosed in childhood due to symptoms related to esophageal and or tracheal obstruction. Pathology. This anomaly is caused by persistence of the right and left embryonic fourth IOTI catches, which results in formation of a vascular ring from the splitting of the ascending IOTA into two limbs that pass to either side of the trachea and esophagus, both of which get encircled, which then join as a single descending IOTA. Prenatal imaging is required for an accurate antenatal diagnosis and can be easily made by using ultrasonography. The diagnosis can be obtained in a transverse view of the fetal thorax at the level of the three vessel and trachea view. The diagnosis of double IOTI catch is made when there are two IOTI catches that form a complete vascular array encircling the trachea with a common carotid artery and subclavian artery arising separately from each charge. After the diagnosis of double IOTI catch is made, it is important to determine whether there are any associated cardiac malformations. The subtypes of double IOTI catch are right dominant touch, 75 to 80%, which is the most common, and uh, co dominant touch, and another type is left dominant touch. Major congenital anomalies associated with fetal aneuploidy. In trisomy 21, some of the major congenital anomalies are AV canal defect, duodenal atresia, ventricular megaly, other cardiac defects, cystic hygroma, non-immune hydrops. In trisomy 13, some of the major congenital anomalies are cardiac defects, CNS abnormalities, cleft lip or palate, omphalocy, midline facial anomalies, ecogenic kidneys, urogenital anomalies, polydactyly, rocker bottom feet, cystic hygroma, non immune hydrops, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. In trisomy 18, some of the major congenital anomalies are cardiac defects, spina bifida, micrognathia, omphalocy, clenched hands or wrists, radial aplasia, club feet, cerebellar dysgenesis, cystic hygroma, non-immune hydrops, congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Conclusion. Early fetal imaging helps identify major fetal malformation. The combination nuchal translucency measurement and maternal serum analytes, pregnancy associated plasma protein A and free beta HCG is the most common aneuploidy screening paradigm in the first trimester of pregnancy. The finding of one sonographic marker of aneuploidy should prompt a more targeted ultrasound examination to validate for additional signs of aneuploidy. These are some of the references which are taken for the preparation of this paper. Thank you.